Hey everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Karshina with Verse Films Productions and this is Screamtober. We're doing a video a day for 31 days up into Halloween. Let's see if your favorite is on the list. Let's go. Welcome back to our Survival Horror Week. This 1972 gem is both horrific and psychologically terrifying. Rated R with a runtime of 1 hour and 49 minutes. We take a look at Deliverance. Several iconic, eerie lines and the chance to see some of Hollywood's elite in their youth, played by John Voight, Burt Reynolds, Ned Beatty, and Ronnie Cox. The four friends, Ed, Lewis, Bobby, and Drew, respectively are intent on seeing the Kahaluasi River before it's dammed and turned into a lake. Outdoor fanatic Lewis Medlock takes his friends on a canoeing trip they'll never forget into the dangerous American backcountry. Shot on location on the Chattooga River in Clayton, Georgia, this ill-fated canoe trip taken by four Atlanta businessmen was a major box office success and encouraged then-Governor Jimmy Carter to create a state film commission in 1973, setting the foundation for film production in Georgia. Another cultural contribution is the iconic Dueling Banjos. The song is at the center of the film's signature scene in which Drew, on guitar, plays a duet with a local boy named Lonnie on banjo. Nominated for three Academy Awards, including Best Picture, directed by Oscar-nominated John Borman, Hope and Glory, and starring Academy Award winner John Voight, Mission Impossible, and Heat. An Oscar nominee, Golden Globe and Emmy winner, Burt Reynolds, Boogie Nights, Evening Shade, and of course, the bandit himself, this box office hit pits their nerve and muscle against the churning white waters of a wild Georgia River, where only three are delivered from the heart-pounding experience. Recently selected by the prestigious American Film Institute as one of the 400 greatest American films of all time, Leonard Maltin, best known as America's film critic, praises this action and psychological adventure as having two of the most terrifying film villains in history, giving it its highest rating, four stars. The plot, which seems simple enough, gradually takes on an eerily disturbing nature. The local mountain folk take a painfully obvious dim view of these city boys carousing through their woods and the following day continuing on down the river. Beatty and Voight are accosted and sexually assaulted. Thus, what started out as nothing more than a lark through the Appalachians has now turned into a nightmare in which our four protagonists come to see the thin line that exists between what we think of as civilization and what we think of as barbarism. The dialogue is sparse, but screenwriters and the director use it as a strength, allowing events and cinematography to speak volumes about the character. The violence, though disturbing, also acts as an integral part of the film. The scenery is spectacular and Deliverance makes some of the best use of foreshadowing and silence I've ever seen in a movie. Few movies leave such an impression on the viewer. To this day, I can't hear dueling banjos or just about any banjo music for that matter without thinking of this movie, nor can I help but feel this movie doomed Ned Beatty's acting career. After seeing this film, every time you see Ned Beatty in any other role, you can't help but remember the infamous riverbank scene. Even people who have never seen seen the movie know the ghastly meaning of the words squill like a pig. It is truly worth taking the time to see this film. It is an excellent treatise of the human reaction when challenged with fear, danger, and adventure. Here's some trivia about the film. While filming the whitewater canoeing scene, Ned Beatty was thrown overboard and was sucked under by a whirlpool. A production assistant dove in to save him, but he didn't surface for 30 seconds. Sir John Borman asked Beatty, how did you feel? And Beatty responded, and I quote, I thought it was going to drown. 
and the first thought was, how will John finish the film without me? And my second thought was, I bet the bastard will find a way, end quote. Director John Borman didn't want an actor to play Lonnie, who was described in the script as probably a halfwit, likely from a family inbred to the point of imbecility. 16-year-old Billy Redden was spotted at a local high school and cast. Number two, Redden did not know how to play the banjo. The arm you see playing the chords belongs to a local musician who was hiding out of sight. Number three, Ronnie Cox, who plays Drew, was hired because he played the guitar. Deliverance was his first time in front of a camera. Number four, Steve Mandel played the guitar part on the soundtrack and taught Cox the song for the scene. Number five, Arthur Smith recorded feuding banjos with Don Reno in 1955. The song reached its first major audience when it was played in a 1963 episode of The Andy Griffith Show. Its popularity skyrocketed with Deliverance, which used a version of Smith's. Smith was not credited and sued Warner Brothers. He was awarded past and future royalties as well as songwriting credit. Number six, Dueling Banjos won a Grammy in 1973 for Best Country and Western Instrumental Performance. Number seven, the song rose to number one on Billboard's Adult Contemporary Chart. It also spent four weeks at number two on Billboard's All Genre Hot 100 Chart, just behind Roberta Flack's wildly popular Killing Me Softly with his song. Number eight, an Irish gangster broke into Borman's home and stole the Dueling Banjos gold record. Number nine, Dueling Banjos has been used in several TV commercials, including Toyota, Mini Cooper, and Mitsubishi products. Check your local listings where you can find this iconic film and see if it really does deliver the goods. <laughs> I believe you could. That's good. Yeah, it's very good, too. God damn, you play a mean banjo.